Hello, and welcome back to Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that YouTube dial and selecting my channel and joining me as I explore the wide world of pens. And I do seem to focus on a particular part of the world, but that's just the way it happens. And I do enjoy value, and I do enjoy not overpaying for anything. So you see in front of you a pen that just attracted me visually, and the price was great. I saw it on AliExpress. It's also available in one source on eBay. It doesn't seem to be a pen that's promoted, made a lot of, whatever the reasoning is. And if we look at it, it's an interesting pen. Nice design on the clip. And we look around to the back, and we'll see it's labeled. Yes, there's a kangaroo. It's a kaigaloo. It's a 222. Not to be confused with the 222 kangaroo, which is a resin pen. This is a metal pen. And it's lacquered, coated, kind of like paint drops splattered across it. I just find it interesting. The only thing that's interesting is that clip is at a little bit of an angle, which to me is easily fixed by just doing that. You know, standard folded steel clip that's been plated with some type of gold colored plating. It's not a pull off cap. That's what you would think it would be. It's an unscrew cap. About two turns to unscrew. And we'll see what I like is this pattern is consistent on the section. It's not slippery. It feels like a a turned resin type of material. So number five, Kaigalu nib. And it's certainly an extra fine point. And it does say nothing on Yeah, it does say EF on it. Your standard injection molded feed. And we would expect it's a cartridge converter. We take the pen apart. We'll talk a little bit about that. But you notice metal piece here on the section which coincides with the metal threads in the works well hmm, doesn't really spin on but that's fine you notice the threads are kind of uh, chunky there which is good but it still takes two turns so I'm going to do something that I normally don't do we're going to do a comparison so joining the Kaigaloo is a Jin Hao 156 also held up by a crab also metal pen. Also under $10 US dollars delivered. This pen, I think I just got as a gift. I've had it for a while, but just haven't been motivated to review it. It looks similar to a pen I reviewed a while ago, but it is branded Jin Hao. And if we turn it around, we'll see 156. It's a nice green lacquer with a kind of a darker stripe in it. Nice clip. Very substantial. Unlike the folded steel clip on the Kai Glue, this is kind of a stamped forged clip. And it's rhodium plated and it's spring loaded. Very nice. Feels very good. Good design and unlike the Kai Glue, it pops off. But we'll see just a plain black section not replicating the pattern in the cap and barrel. And it also has a number five nib. It's a Jin Hao Fine. And that same injection molded feed. We unscrew it. Those threads are a little bit nicer. We see the standard Jin Hao converter. And we also see metal threads. So they share a fair bit in common. But primarily, it's a smaller metal pen. Number five nib. And a nice enamel coating at a reasonable price. Nothing incredibly impressive about these pens, but I expect they're great everyday writers, and that would be their use for me. So you ask, why do you say it's a folded steel clip? Because we have this magnet here that sticks to that clip. So not all steel is magnetic. Ferrous steel non-stainless, an alloy that's mostly made of iron with very little 
additives to it is going to be magnetic. Some stainless steel is magnetic, but if it has nickel in it, it's non-magnetic. You may have heard of 18.8, non-magnetic. Look at the Jin Hao, and the magnet doesn't stick to anything on the Jin Hao. So this is probably brass. So it's a more expensive metal in that clip compared to the Kaigalu. You may see where I'm going with this comparison. So every pen has a story, but some pens have more of a story. So I ordered this pen back on August 18th on AliExpress, just because I liked the way it looked, and I ordered a green one. On AliExpress, if you need to contact the seller or the seller needs to contact you, they use a messaging system, which is kind of outside of AliExpress. Here's what it looks like. But originally, I used to get an alert saying, oh, you got a message like you do if with Etsy, if the seller communicates with you or eBay or any of the other sellers, but not on AliExpress. So I didn't see the message that they didn't have the pen that I ordered. So we went back and forth and back and forth. Eventually, this pen showed up. There was no tracking, but eventually, like I said, the pen showed up. And, you know, it's not the color that I wanted, but I'm glad that I have it. And it's not sold very many places. It's still on AliExpress, and it's on that one spot on eBay. So I'm certain other people have had experiences buying pens through various selling processes, and sometimes it's frustrating. But to me, I enjoy getting a pen. I enjoy getting a new pen. And that's part of the journey. It's an experience, a life experience. You learn from it. Would I order from that seller again? Probably if they have something that I want. Here's the pen uh, partially disassembled. I just really was impressed with a little bit of details here and there. It's an interesting pen. A new Kaigalu converter, branded like most of them are, but it's nice and clear. Doesn't hold a lot of ink. Probably a little over half a mil at best. Yeah, these are all metal parts with uh, a nice coat of paint. Not the color that I wanted, but as we saw, I tried to get it. But this one is good because I just enjoy the model. And it is there in kind of like a gold paint on the side of the cap. The nib and feed pulled out relatively easily. There is like a clear uh, nib collar in there. doesn't appear to be glued in, but it doesn't seem to want to come out either. So and there we go. So you can replace the nib if you would like. Easy to do. Let's look inside the cap and see what they did. Nibs stay wet. We're in dark mode. Going to bring in the LED. They think they did a good job with that coating. A little bit of lighter pieces stuck in there. If you look inside the cap, it's a nice uh, black plastic liner. As you can see, there's uh, plastic threads there that go against those metal threads at the bottom of the barrel. And also, that metal insert into the barrel matches up to that metal piece of the section. So, like I said, good engineering. So it wouldn't be fair if I didn't bring in the LED light on the Jin Hao like I did on the Kaigalu. This shows up the stripes even more dramatically. And let's look inside the barrel and see what Jin Hao did. Oh, nice full plastic liner in the barrel. Looks like there's a screw there at the top, which can be problematic to hold in that spring-loaded clip. I am impressed with the look of this pen under the LED light.
So you've heard the writing. Both of these nibs are fairly smooth. The Kaigalu Extra Fine nib obviously gives you a little bit more feedback. It's not quite as smooth as the Jin Hao Fine nib. And I've been writing with the Jin Hao Number no. 5 Fine nib for years and years and years, and they've been consistently good from the 992 to the 991, all the way through to the newer versions. Consistently good nibs. I just enjoy a little thicker line from the fine nib on the Jin Hao. So what better way to end up the video but with two pens held up by crabs on a rotating turntable. Dimensionally, these pens are very close. Here's a look at some of those dimensions. Weight-wise, they're also pretty close. So it's not a lot to distinguish these two pens. Other than aesthetics and writing. And writing, I think they're very, very similar. They're not exactly the same nib. So if the Kaiglu had a fine or the Chin Hao had an extra fine, it would be a more one-to-one -one comparison. But both of these pens, I think, serve the function that they were designed for. So it's just really a question as to what do you find aesthetically more pleasing. To me, the Jin Hao wins hands down. I love the clip. I like the way that green and black striping is done. I like the pull-off cap. And I do prefer the Jin Hao nib in regards to these two pens that you see in front of you. So you watch the writing, so you get my ideas on the feelings on that. And I use the same ink for both pens. I'm trying to do that now to be a fair comparison. So we're going to just zoom in a little bit and we're going to say, I hope this video finds all of you safe, healthy, happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying every day to its fullest. That's what's fun. And that's what makes life really, really fun for me. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found it interesting, entertaining, educational. And we're going to say bye. See you soon.